She was a homeless woman who lost all of her kids due to mental health. It took her a year to come into our center. It took her three years to acclimate and integrate herself with the community. Next, I'm going to show you our video, how the May Center helps elders heal. ខ្ញុំឈ្មោះស៊ីវីលីមកើតនៅភូមិកណ្ឌៀងស្រុកបាកាន <coughs> The gardeners are Cambodian survivors, the survivors from the Khmer Rouge genocide. They use gardening as a form of healing for them. ជាមេជាប្រពៃនេះរបស់ខ្មែរយើងជាអឺរបស់នេះធ្វើយើងដល់ដែនអីកំណើតឲ្យ <coughs> ជួយសុខភាពយើងជាធ្វើឲ្យយើងអំបាត់អំបាត់ការអបសុខហើយវាធ្វើឲ្យយើងស្រឡាញ់វាពេលឃើញវាធំអាចជាវេលាព្រោ
These are all the memories that you need to cultivate and bring it back to you because that is your medicine. In our American society, it's so quick for us to run into a pharmacy. And we never look at the side effect. It says, hey, FYI, you may have kidney failure. Or, eh, don't worry about it, I'm just gonna take it because it's a habit. In, in an aspect of learning, what I've come to discover is when you have the time, like right now, learning is very important. But when you have chaos enter your life, you don't have time to learn new skills. There's a saying that says, hey, if a tsunami come and you try to ask your neighbor, can you teach me how to swim? Not going to happen, right? Because that person needs to swim for themselves. So this is it. This is the moment that you gather a lot of knowledge, a lot of education in preparation for this chaos to enter your life. Why do I use the word chaos? Scientists have discovered an equation for a life as an equation for everything else we discover. And they said, what is life? The equation is chaos. Definition of chaos. The past, less the present, equals to future. Present, anything could happen. You have all these factors that could happen. You drive your car, boom. Chaos happens, right? So it is the now. OK. I'm going to start sharing with you I think we're about that time to go into our resiliency toolkit, if that's okay. And I also brought lemongrass, so any one of you who wants to start growing lemongrass, the name is grass, so if even if you don't have a green thumb, you're not gonna kill it. <laughs> don't worry about it. And so you could use this and plant them at your house. To share about one of my resiliencies with flowers. For 20 years, I couldn't smile because my system, my fight and flight mode was constantly on. At nighttime, the nightmares attacked me. Why do I keep seeing a woman being to near death? Why did someone kidnap me when I was six years old? Why was I abandoned? I couldn't smile. I couldn't study. It affected everything of my life. And then I figured out, these flowers, they're so beautiful. How could someone smile at them? So I thought, okay, flowers, hold my smile for me, and when I'm able to, I will smile. It took me 20 years, and I smiled every day, and everyone got, Laura, doesn't your mouth hurt? <laughs> no, because I haven't been able to smile for 20 years, and I finally let go of the fear. I finally let go of the nightmare. And now I can smile. Whatever it is that you go through in your life, the most stressful aspect of your life, try and get some plants, surround yourself by it. Trader Joe's, five bucks. And if you kill it, it's okay. It's totally okay. That's my first resiliency. And then the thing that gets us the most is hardship. This is soil. This is living soil. For it to live, that means it could nurture the plant. A gardener has the ability to create a surrounding that will nurture life. When you become a gardener, you know how to play the elements of nature. You know about heat. You know about water. You know what ticks you off, what makes you happy. You know when to take a break. So this is where your instinct comes. If something makes you happy and you're going through something very stressful, do it. Most of us have the excuse, I don't have the time, I don't have the money, but guess what? If you skip on that, you're gonna pay for it double that. You never know what happens. And so in a lot of divorces, this happens. The wife or the husband needs some time off. And they said, we have kids to raise. We don't have that. We don't have the money. We don't have the luxury of time. What happened? Divorce hits. Right? Because we don't have that self-care time. So soil is very important. All gardeners, if you are, you've been gardening for a long time, you know you're not a gardener of plants. You're a gardener of soil. If your soil doesn't work, life will not grow. If your surrounding doesn't nurture you, you will not see its full potential. Will not. 
and you will suffer. And so, take care of your surrounding, figure out what you need. And that means close off everything. Close off the community pressure, close off the pressure from your financial aspect, schooling, close it off temporarily, and ask yourself what nurtures you. Here's how soil helped me with my resiliency. We're going through resiliency right now. After resiliency, I will share with you that after trauma, there's this amazing thing that no one talked about. It's post-traumatic growth. And I got that. I became this like adaptive bacteria that every time I had trauma, I got more wisdom and more knowledge, and I got stronger. Okay, we'll share about that later. But for a lot of us, I want you right now to connect in your memory with soil. Soil is a complex system of life. We know more about stars than we do about soil. Recently, we have discovered there's a bacteria in there that if you do have a cut on your hand and you're gardening, this bacteria will enter your body and will actually make you feel happier, reduce your stress. And I read that article in research last month. I'm like, darn it, that's why I'm always happy, because of bacteria. <laughs> bacteria are friends. In your gene right now, you have lots of species of bacteria in your gene, right? Most of us are like, yep, I know that. Others are like, oh no, no way. Yes way. <laughs> Here's how soil helped me overcome my trauma. I keep saying to myself, why has life picked me and gave me all these chaos? Separated from my father, kidnapped, never been reunited with my father, lost my memory, beaten when I was 14 to a point where I had concussion, I became epileptic after that, seizure in high school and college. Why me? Why do I still have to work hard to express myself and my full self? And the soil helped me. I looked at it and go, there's dead soil? When was it alive? And then I realized even the soil had to struggle for balance. Even the soil had to work hard. So when you step on the ground, I know it's a cement, but I want you to remember the soil, even the soil struggle. So it is okay for you to struggle. It is okay for you to go through hardship because at the end of it, it will make you great. It will allow you to rediscover who you are, what your powers are, what you're capable of. Don't let hardship stop you. This is the resiliency of the soil. I want you to associate that kind of resiliency thoughts to soil. Because when life hits you hard and you step outside your door, you go, oh yeah, I remember that. Remember Laura said soil. Okay. When you're taking a finals exam and you're stressed out, why am I here? Okay, even the soil is struggling. It's okay for me to struggle. Resiliency number two, association. When I was heavily traumatized, my brain couldn't study and absorb material like other kids. It would take them 30 minutes, it would take me five hours. It's just the way trauma affects you. But then I discovered that my body has different aspects of it, like the muscles. I decide to train my hands, a memory given to my hands. So for physics and calculus, I did hundreds and hundreds of problems because I know my brain didn't think, but I know that my hand, just like riding a bike, will have a memory. Ninth grade, ESL. 10th grade, honor English. By 11th grade, I was already in calculus. And people are wondering, Laura, how did you get there? My hands. I've done hundreds and hundreds of problems. I could daydream while I'm doing the exam. I don't even have to study for AP calculus because my body has this memory associated with it. A lot of us thinking, I gotta rely on my brain. Mm -mm. You're not just your brain. You're not just your arms or your legs. There's a whole complex system 
of you, of all of you. And that's something that you have to absorb in and believe in. It's that confidence that will get you through. Any other questions? We could start taking questions as I'm going through, because I realize it might be complex. <laughs> Do do no any, question. Yes. Do you do any composting? Yes. What oh, yes. We have a whole system of that. <laughs> what kind of composting? So, can you describe us a good one? There's different type of composting. Cold composting or hot composting. Let's save that for the end of the class. Okay. Let's, um, if you have any other questions about what I just said, let's clarify that. But composting is very important. Yes. Composting leads to living soil. Right? Eventually, in our country, it'd be very, it already is very expensive to garden. And this is your tap into nature's resiliency. And our kids who are growing up, they don't have access to that. Now schools are starting to put the gardens in. Now they have to balance that. For a lot of us who has trauma from our grandparents and great grandparents, and you know that trauma goes down to seven generations, you know there's trauma in you that was passed by your parents. The trauma that I lived through, the war, the genocide, oh, that wasn't just it. I got trauma from my parents. Oh my God. I was like, my mom was 13 years old during the genocide. And during the genocide, they would actually use kids to do all the horrible things to the adults. So you can imagine my mom when she had me. It's like, oh my God, this little monster, what is she gonna do to me? Same trauma, and therefore, she couldn't accept me as a child. She would say, Laura, I don't know what, to, what it is like to be a mother, but you're on your own. And so that sets me off in a course. Okay, I'm on my own. Since I land here, I've been on my own. I made it out, but because of these things. And you could too. The next resiliency for me was the separation from my father. My father was the closest parent I connected with. I was kidnapped from him, abandoned into an orphanage. And I couldn't, I couldn't have this closure of not seeing my dad. He searched for me for 10 years. He got sick and passed away, never been reunited. So there's a void in my heart. For a lot of us who have gone through loss, parents death, maybe a child, maybe a relative, this loss is heavy and it's deep. You gotta be patient with yourself. How does the garden help me with loss? What is this? Strawberry. Oh, strawberry. Strawberry. Delicious strawberry once upon a time. <laughs> the beginning of compost. Very good. The beginning of compost. I thought you would have gotten it. <laughs> I used something else, but it's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was something else. He knows. Also, the beginning of compost. The beginning of compost. <laughs> beginning of compost is an aspect of life. It is a universal law that things have to come to an end. If there's a beginning, there's an end, period. We just don't know when. As a gardener, what I did was I grew amazing vegetables like heirloom tomatoes. My favorite fruit is a mango. And I hope and I wish that this peak fruit would stay there forever, but it never happened. No matter what I do, it would never stay at its best forever, because this exists. I'm gonna lose my dad either way. My closure, ah, but what was it that hurt so badly? It was love. That deep pain in you when you lost someone, that's love. In philosophy, it says that love and pain, it's the same thing. The more you love something, the deeper, the stronger, the more intense it hurts. 
Broken hearts, we all know that, right? The more you love that person, the more painful it is. So when you have that pain in your heart, remember that's love. Don't misunderstand it. When you misunderstand it, what we call a trauma, distorted perception. You cry, you decide to eat horrible food, binged out. I'm not saying anything bad about binging because I do it often. And so we do all these things to ourselves, self-sabotaging ourselves, right? But we misunderstood that. That's love. It was my love for my dad that was so deep. But for me, I discovered that that love always exists in me. No ocean can separate that. No time can separate that. No one can take that away from me. Even my kidnappers, especially my kidnappers. So I decided what was the purpose of the kidnapping? It was to harm my dad. And to harm my dad, it means to harm me. And so I, decide to be the best of who I am. I study so hard, even with PTSD 4.0 from high school. I study so hard that even with PTSD, I graduated with a bachelor's degree in biochemistry. Because I want to say to the kidnappers, you cannot destroy my love with my dad. He will always be here. And so the best revenge Next, resiliency. Success. success. Yes, success is the best revenge. If you are sitting there and hoping the person is harming you, all these horrible thoughts and harm, my mentor would say that's like taking poison and hoping the other person will die. <laughs> Silly, huh? I was like, okay, I get that. <laughs> Okay. My next resiliency that came out was the sense of smell. Your body is a complex system. <laughs> Very complex. I thought, how am I going to get my memories back? And then I realized my memories were triggered by different smells. I was putting my life together. The day I was kidnapped, I was smelling asphalt. They were putting on the road. And this moped was taking, away, taking me away from my dad. And I said, oh my god, now I remember this scar on my head. Because I tried to take the moped and I drove it into the jungles. And the kidnapper ran after me yanked on the brake, and I hit my head on the motorcycle front. I got a big dent. As I'm getting older, it's less. The scars you could hardly see. Yeah. The other thing was, in America, I'm in my 20s. I have a two-inch scar across my left Achilles heel. What was that? Why did it happen? The smell triggers these memories. I was on a table of this operation, no anesthetic. They were sewing my Achilles heel. I was screaming and kicking. Right? The sense of smell triggered my neurons, fired it up, because it hasn't been fired in 20 years, and voila, okay, I got that memory back. It took me 15 years to track down my nightmares and identify whether they're nightmares or movies or was it past memories. I was so Americanized, I was like, okay, I don't know what my name was. I'm here in America going through regular school and all of a sudden my personality changed because my memories came back. Just like that. Sense of smell. You have to know yourself. Gardening is all about learning how to nurture a unique plant, as unique as you are. And you have to learn about yourself. How do you grow? Where do you grow? What ticked you off? 
When to avoid it, when to surrender. When to go through it and take the wisdom from that. If you know how to grow something, you know how to grow yourself. It is not to say that if you don't have a green thumb, then you don't know about yourself. Absolutely not. We're all at different stages. We already learned about the Miranda. In the Western culture, it's even more important for you to learn how to grow your own food, your own supplements. Everything's all commercialized. How much pesticide are being put in your food? How about the medication that you're taking? If you don't learn now how to be self-sustaining, you will be relying on these different things that has all these side effects. And the next generation, and the next generations to come, they will not have the confidence of who they are, what they're capable of. And so Moringa has been my life saving. All these healing that I've done for myself, never use any medication. My seizure, never use any medication. Just recently I went to the, do the MRI and they said, hey Laura, the blood in your brain is gone. So this seizure, it's more of a habit. Just like I trained my hand muscles, that seizure is for like eight years. It was conditioning my body muscles. And I didn't know. If I were to take medication after medication, I would not know. Not to say that I'm against taking medication. You have to combine both. But you have to be smart. You have to build this confidence in yourself. You have to put the work and the effort in to know who you are and how to plan for the future. Gardeners are master of time. The next resiliency I learned. Gardeners are masters of time. We control the past, we control the future, and we control the present. Why? Let me share with you when I was abandoned to the orphanage. My foster parents were holistic healers. When I was kidnapped, they knew immediately how to heal me. They said, Laura, you're going to meditate. You're not going to do anything. You just sit and breathe. You're going to watch mom and dad at the rice paddy day in and day out, seven days a week, eight to nine hours a day for almost 12 months. And I cried every day for my parents. And all of a sudden, it clicked. I made this negotiation with nature. And I said, it's okay to let go of this longing for my dad and mom. It's okay. But I can enjoy this very moment that I have with the people who care for me. And I let it go. And I became a scientist that moment. I start to study nature. I start to want to know why does season happen? And so my parents said, Laura, the drought is coming. Let's plant more crops. Step one to control in the past. So when the drought came, everyone didn't have enough food, we had all the food. And so our future was taken care of. And I put that knowledge into here in America. That got me into the post-traumatic resiliency and well-being that I've never thought, never thought of. I did my pre-med while having PTSD. And so if you're going through trauma, don't feel like you're less than the average people. Absolutely not. I did not get a 4.0 or did my pre-med just because I was smart, but I wanted to prove to all the survivors, to all of those who have experienced trauma, that you are as good as everybody else. Your body has the ability to heal itself. And that has been proven by science. In biochemistry, I study all these little enzymes that heals our body. The way our physical heals itself when you get a cut, your mental does the same thing. Okay? Your mental does the same thing. So here's now my future that I prepare for myself. I did very well in school. As the byproduct of that, I became a millionaire at the age of 25. Didn't even know about it. 
wealth came as a result of me working on myself. Nowadays, we think we do everything to destroy our health for wealth. Happiness doesn't take a lot of money. But when you are constantly happy every day, it's a byproduct. It's a byproduct. That center, I bought that property and I converted it to a trauma healing center to give the very thing that empowered me <coughs> to empower my community. And it doesn't matter if you're an immigrant or you were born here, the same pattern of healing is true. And I want you to take that with you. The good memories that you have, those are your medicine. When you are depressed or sad, think of happy memories. When it gets very difficult, rely on nature to hold your smiles for you, to hold your happiness for you. And that's the secret of it. You have to be resourceful and learn how to use everything. In my culture, we have lemongrass, yes, for food, but also for sauna. Also to give yourself heat when your body feels too cold. Most of us are not connected with our bodies. When you're shivering, you're like wearing short sleeves and shorts. Yes, you're gonna get the cold and the flu, that's natural. But I would just boil this up, put a blanket or a towel on my head, this is my sauna. Leftover, I pour into a tub. I take a hot tub bath in lemongrass oil. I was fortunate because I was born in Asia where all the spices and fruits and vegetables were organic and they have all these healing properties to it. In America, it's a melting pot. You are not divided by these things. You could use turmeric. You don't have to be Cambodian. You can use lemongrass. You do not have to be Cambodian. Healing will cross boundaries, all boundaries, culture, values, belief, religion, all of it. I grow this. And I make my fermented kombucha. And I juice it and I put it in there. I chop it up and I put it in my sauteed. I eat it every day. Guess what? Trauma, stress, whether in school, personal life, finances, <coughs> it gives you inflammation. And if you don't do anything about it, it accumulates in your body. Your body pain will give you mental suffering. It is a vicious circle. But if you could break that circle, you could come out of it. So this is turmeric. Include this in your diet. Because if life is stressful, life is difficult, period. As you can see in the welcoming message that I wrote to you, I called every one spiritual warriors. Because how could you not be? Life is difficult. You gotta live through loss. You gotta live through lost. Being lost can't find yourself. You live through injustice, systematic trauma. It's here. Whether you know it or not, it's here. To live life, you have to be a spiritual warrior. If you look at me, for me to come out of the trauma that I've gone through, it takes this mentality of a warrior. That's what it takes. Aggressor beating your mother to near death? Yeah. <clears throat> Kidnapping that ripped your whole fabric of life and family? Yeah. So for you too. Turmeric is a must. It's easy to grow again. You could buy an organic turmeric bowl from, let's say, Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. Springtime, which is on Wednesday. <laughs> huh? Go to 99 cent store. Buy their soil if you live in an apartment complex. A container costs a dollar. Put it in there. Add some soil in. Just wait for it to come out. Watering, yes. When you learn how to grow something, it disciplines you. It disciplines you for something a lot bigger and better. 
Life has an unlimited bounty gifts to you. Don't forget that. It's just they're waiting for you to receive it. And you have to be willing. You have to ask the question. This DNA that I have, that's been passed on and alive for a hundred billion years, from a bacteria to the human form, it has gone through so much chaos, and it's here. <clears throat> Why is it here? For me, I'm still discovering myself. That healing centered empowers survivors to change the city of Long Beach charter last year because the system was dividing them, taking their voice away, oppressing them. And these people have lost their children, their parents, gone through the genocide, stood up to the city council and said, no, enough. I've gone through the genocide, I will not be oppressed. And the city said, you're right. Can you help us write the policy? And they said, yeah, we're going to take the power from the city government and we're going to give it to the people. And they're all seniors. They're all seniors. That video that you saw on Thai, the woman who was talking about the squash, her, her job during a genocide was to feed 964 people from a four year straight ration food that was not even given to the people. As a single mom taking care of a disabled daughter, to this day, she gives her healing power to the garden. And when she immigrated here, she couldn't afford a house. She lives in an apartment complex. And when the May Center opened, she got her ability to garden. Her resiliency went up. The other older woman, beautiful smile, she escaped three executions during a genocide. See that smile? Beautiful. How could someone smile so beautifully, but yet have escaped three executions? She escaped the first one because she decided to be honest to the communist. They asked her, are you a teacher? Because if you are, we're going to kill you. She said, yes, I'm a kindergarten teacher. Go to that line. Someone spoke up for her and said, she's the best gardener. If your goal is to produce massive rice for exporting, you've got to save her. Second execution, her crop, where she stored her crops, got caught on fire. They said, we're going to kill you off. Miracle happened. They saved her again to garden even further. The third one, the country declared genocide is over, but there weren't any radio or cell phone. Hello, you over there up north. Genocide is declared over. Nothing was done. And so to erase all evidence, they decided we're going to execute all the survivors. And just as it happens, she was saved. And so that's the woman that you saw, the second woman, the older woman. Resiliency. How are we doing with time? We're doing good? Yes. I don't want to keep talking because I want this to be interactive. It's one hour and 30 minutes, so you're 47 away. Perfect. Now it's going to be hands on. Okay. For those of you who are afraid of dirt, which you shouldn't, I got brand new gloves for you. No worries. For those of you who are fine and have been gardeners, hands on. The bathroom is over there that you can wash your hands. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. We already talk about the bacteria kingdom. No. Okay. A little bit. Let's finish this off. Your digestive system is one of the most important. All of your systems are important. But if your digestive system is not up to par, you're going to have a lot of physical problems. In your digestive gut alone, it has 100 trillion bacteria. Bacteria that will make vitamin Bs for you. That helps you with your state of mind, your nervous system. Fermentation. After gardening, the next step is fermentation, from kombucha to kimchi. Okay, that is.
is your next step. To truly know who you are is to study your past. When you study the past of this human world, it's just learning about history. But then you have to study the makeup of this universe before you. It's all in your body. It's in your DNA. Why not learn about it? Bacteria, they're your friends. We have been very compulsive with hand sanitizer, bleaches, chlorine, Lysol. We forgot we're killing off the good bacteria that are protecting us. The reason why we could procreate is because bacteria was protecting us from all these harmful pathogens. Fermentation is the next step. Because I eat this every day, kombucha, kimchi, pickles, because I am replenishing the bacteria in my digestive system. That's the next level. Organic, holistic, you're in control of it. Next step, from gardening to growing bacteria. And if you want any resources to study about fermentation, I'll put it on the website for you to read. It's very simple. Each vegetable, each plant, has its own bacteria that it likes to cultivate. The moment you submerge it under water, these bacteria starts to break down all the harmful things associated with the plants and start getting all the good nutrients out that when you eat it, your body could absorb it right away. Kimchi to sauerkraut. If you live in an apartment complex where there's a lot of smoking happening, secondhand smoke is inevitable. You're going to have it. Your kid's going to have it. Sauerkraut has this bacteria that actually works with your immune system and it heals the cells of your lungs. I didn't need medication because I was having a, a wonderful relationship with the bacteria world. Okay. Okay. Any other questions before we go into the lemongrass division and taking it home? Did I make that announcement that you can take the lemongrass home? Spring is Wednesday. Don't worry, it's not going to die. And then if it dies, it's okay. Okay. So, how would you like to do this? Let's take one person from each table as a volunteer to come up and break some of the lemongrass apart to take it back to your table and have fun with it. Get your hands in the soil. Look at the root system. Look at how it grows. Study the lemongrass. Okay, let's get, take some volunteers. One person from each table. You. Yes. Wonderful. Come on. Oh, great. Okay. Anybody want gloves or you're okay? No gloves. Okay. Great. Go at it. person who was very ill and by that time I started to be vegan which is not eating any products that come from animals right and I gave her a diet and she was so thankful because she was so sick she was almost dying she was so thankful that after two weeks she gave me a little vase with um, uh, sweet peas flowers 
And I didn't know anything about sweet peas. And when she gave it to me, it was so precious, so beautiful. It was small, and she painted the, the base, the small base. And I said, what is this? Why does it smell so good? She was like, you don't know what it is? I said, no. It is, it's called sweet, they call sweet peas, and they're very, they're smell. They have these beautiful colors, and would you like to to learn how to grow them? I said, me? No, no. <laughs> no, 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 everything dies. Everything that I touch dies. So I'm, I'm not a gardener, no. Oh, I can teach you. Then she gave me a paper on how to do it. I said, you try yourself. So for the first, the first year I tried, it was awful. My seeds died, I didn't know it was so tiny, they died, I was crying, saying, no, I won't try anymore. And then I called her and she was like, keep trying, just take care of them while they're small. So after, the, after learning and practicing, I had a year, beautiful year that I could grow like 200 seeds. Oh, wonderful. And everybody in my neighborhood, when they come home, they were so grateful. But the, the joy that gives me when I grow them every single year for spring, it's just beautiful. I, this winter I couldn't do it, but I can. I didn't. I couldn't explain why they made me so happy. Mm -hmm. That just gave me the answer. Mm -hmm. And sweet peas are so beautiful. Oh my God! If you can grow them in a little base, in a, you don't really need big spaces for to grow them. The fragrance and the amount of flowers they give you, but this tiny seed is just beautiful. People have been enjoying my my jar for already eight years. Wonderful. Growing them. So I invite you to try to, to plant a seed as we feel, see how beautiful and grow, you know, they grow. But it's the joy that is connected to it. So my resiliency came out by the joy of growing them and see the beauty after, and the whole process. Exactly. I even take pictures of them when they're little and how they were growing. And, but this is, it just makes, everything makes sense to me right now. Like, so it's resiliency. They're giving me resiliency. Yes. And it's just yes. beautiful. Thank you. So, so when one person gardens, the community benefits. Oh. Because it's a psychology. Yes. When you walk around a house that's full of fruits and vegetables, you notice your happy hormones are going up. Right? You're like, oh my God, why am I happy? We're so used to living in areas where we don't get to see much plants. This is called the cement jungle. Yeah. And your the school for kids fences are so high, and you're wondering, are they keeping someone out or in? Right. So when one person gardens, the whole community benefits. Do you feel like you can heal somebody in your home that's not participating by doing it yourself? Yes. 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 It's almost like living in a black and white, and all of a brought up the colors. Like a color flower, and all of a sudden people are starting to smile, just, and you don't know why. Because that everything is all about energy. Everything that has mass has energy. There's energy that we absorb that are positive and there are negative. You have the ability to place yourself in a place of negative energy or positive energy. Plants, positive energy. If you put it in your house, it will actually clean the air in your house. Better air in a house, happier, smarter, healthier. Aloe vera is the next plant to learn how to grow in your house because it will clean the air in the house. And good for the skin and eating it. I eat it every day now and it's easy to grow. It's a succulent. You cannot kill a cactus. <laughs> right? <laughs> She's never watered for years. <laughs> Question? Oh, well, I just, two things. I feel yes. the energy. I can feel already better touching the soil. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I feel it, like, I don't know, more calmer or something. But um, I want to ask for about EMF. Some of us are sensitive to, you know, electromagnetic frequencies. Mm -hmm. What plant would help with that in the house? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. So with electromagnetic energy, it also has to associate with what you're used to. For example, when you were born, your parents may have put in certain things that associates with good memories. And so the vibration from that plant will allow you to connect with it better. 
For example, some people don't like succulents. The fact there's sharp edges, it scares them, it triggers them. For survivors, if they've been tortured with sharp objects, uh, aloe vera would not be a good plant for them because they're constantly fearful. They might get pricked or hurt. So the question has to go back with you. With your own memory, do you have good memories when you look at flowers, plants, or fruit? Let's break it down we to categories. We actually buttercups and okay. like dandelions. Mm -hmm. Water. Water. Really little kids and we like stick the buttercup yeah. under our neck. And I'd make dandelion stew. We just would be creative with the leaves. Yes. And so I have good memories of that. So that's your answer. But what about EMFs? I don't know much about that in terms of the plants, but the okay. things about energy, it's it's about the bond that you make with it. Okay. And there's this thing called the entanglement theory. Okay. When you intentionally associate with something, you are connected to it. And there's sometimes it goes into your subconscious self. You can't label it, you can't explain it. You don't even know the right question to ask, but it was there. And especially when you're very young. Because kids, young kids, learn how to be in a present moment. They don't think too much about the past regrets because they haven't had it yet, <laughs> right? And so childhood. Is so when I touch the soil, the reason why, for me, I think, because I used to play, I used to make mud pies, and play in the mud, <laughs> and get my brother's bulldozer and dig and get play in the mud, and I, there's something very grounding. Yes. You know? The older woman that was beautiful smile, she described it the same way. She had to get her hands into dirt to feel grounded and healing. And so the thing that was preventing her from healing when she immigrated to America was because she didn't have any land to garden. And so she was placed in Florida, and she decided to leave all of her family members in Florida to come to Long Beach, where there's a lot of Cambodian people that would give her access to seeds that are associating with plants and vegetables from her childhood. And when she had access to soil, everything else in her life was perfect because she was happy with that. And these so soil good. are natural compost. Yeah. And you have lots of survivors who are meditating around the building that are tending to the soil and the plant. And so that's why last night I was thinking, how do I get these plants over there without shocking them? Oh. I waited until 6 p.m. until the sun yeah. was down. Yeah. I went and dug up and put it in there. And I thought, okay, I have to preserve this energy. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. Wow. laughs> Look at you. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Sticking in your shirt. So the seaweed, uh, there was a hospital in, uh, in Nagasaki. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the bomb fell, uh, actually, there was uh, like 3,000 people in Nagasaki. Hospital is a Catholic hospital. So the, nobody got hurt. So they ate a lot of seaweed. They ate a lot of miso soup, a lot of roots, a lot of lemongrass, a lot of everything, ginger, lotus, uh, burdock, carrots, daikon. Mm -hmm. So not, they, nobody touched. So the Vatican sends the special doctors to, you know, it's like God's deed. A lot of chemical. Right. Um, blood was just destroyed. Right. So the question for that is, so the EMF to 5G that is now coming up, right? Yeah, that's what I'm... And there's this Chinese corporation that they're putting, like, on each lamppost, they're putting mm -hmm. all these antennas. They're going to be super dangerous. Mm -hmm. And so the, the Wi-Fi is now going to be... It's going to penetrate to every water molecule. The bees right. are dying. Right. I have three wild beehives in my garden. Mm -hmm. And the bees are coming into the house to hide. So mm -hmm. I've put all around the house, I put this EMF protection. Mm -hmm. And the bees are happy in the house. They're dying outside. Oh. My kids are stepping on dead bees oh like never before. Mm. Ten years. I, and now they're really dying out. But they come to the house and they put them. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I, um, I don't have a question, but uh, uh, like uh, Maria, thank you for your story. Okay. I have a, a brief uh, gardening testimony I'd like to share. Um, I identify strongly with a no, do not give me a plant for a birthday gift or for anything, I will kill it. <laughs> Mainly because I hate them. Uh, I mean, I don't hate them, it's not their fault that I hated them, but I did hate them because um, I, we had school gardens uh, and uh, 
I was the only black child in my school, and I wanted to garden. I gardened, and I couldn't get my mother to come to the garden with me, and I couldn't bear the sight of all these white kids at the garden with their parents, and my mother would never come. I think she was probably more afraid of the white people than I was, although it was pretty intense. And so after two years of trying to get through the gardening season, I'm like, screw it, I'm not doing plants anymore. I, I want no part of it, I will kill them. And um, only a couple years ago, I took a year-long permaculture uh, design course for my personal healing. And, uh, and it changed my relationship with the whole world, it did. Um, just a few months ago, a, um, during, the, during the winter, a tomato seedling started growing in, uh, in a garden box, but it was in a very unpleasant place next to the garden hose. So I thought, once it gets high enough, you know, something's, somebody's just going to pull the hose and <laughs> chop the head off the tomato, just will be uh. terrible. <laughs> like, this tomato will never bear fruit, but it deserves to live out a natural lifespan, so I pick it up and then I move it to a box where it can just be in, you know, like a barren tomato plant, but just living out of an, an, its own life cycle. And about last November, that thing just started growing out tomatoes. I was like, what? <laughs> and, and, and oh, and, but I kept walking by and I'm like, I don't know how to grow tomatoes. And I'm like, oh, you have to, you have to tie it up. And then, you know, every time I would walk by, I would learn something different from the tomato. I'm like, are you talking to me? <laughs> it's like, I was kind of depressed at the time too. So, and it, so it was getting me outside of myself. And I'm like, you know, I didn't really like plants. And she's like, I know, I know, but just give me a little of this and a little of that. So I started tying up the tomatoes. It, it gave me about 20 fruit, um, which were really exciting to eat. And at one point I went, you came here for me. <laughs> and the tomato plant was kind of like, uh, I'm making this up, of course. But it said, <laughs> it said yeah, definitely. And I was like, I'm glad you figured that out. We're, we're a team. And I'm like, wow. yes, thank you so much. But it, I felt like I was really um, blessed and restored by a... Uh, a, a foundling tomato plant <laughs> that was beyond, you know, being able to bear fruit, and and it proved me wrong. It's like, no, just give me a chance, and I will bear fruit. I think we're all like that. Yes, and nothing is by chance. Mm. Your your mind was calling for something. It was. Yes. The way I observe energy in my life is when there are things working in our brain, whether we know it or not, it's there. There's a saying that to a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Right. <laughs> because it's in your thought. You're thinking, I'm going to kill everything. And all of a sudden, you realize this thing is growing by itself. For other people, we wouldn't even know that. Oh, there's an unwanted tomato plant plug in and throw it away. But you didn't. You follow that energy and you say, I'm going to save it. And so when you had that conversation with that tomato plant, that was your connection to nature. Yeah. Energetically, you were going through an experience. The tomato was going through the experience of transplanting, growing, bearing fruit, and then die. Yeah. Your father did. You fathered it. And then the fruits <laughs> has more seeds that will grow. And so that is an exchange of experience between the tomato plant and you. And you see how that story, when you talk about it, it brings you up and you're happy. That was your medicine. Yeah. That was your medicine. So there is this thing called intuition gardening. And if you allow yourself, when you walk into a garden, do exactly what I shared with you when we started this workshop, Relax your shoulders, because your body has a way to communicate with your mind. When your shoulders are down, as in yoga, your body immediately goes into relaxation mode. When you're not on a defense mode, you could relate to all the plants and vegetables in there. A lot of people walk into the garden with a lot of tense emotion and judgment and criticism about themselves. I'm going to kill everything. I don't have a great thumb. Oh my God, is that wheat or is that vegetables? I don't know anything. If you walk in a garden with that, you may leave it with that. 
if you walk in the garden, be open to allow the nature to be your guru so that you could discover yourself. You'll walk out with some knowledge that will teach you, whether it's about the need for watering, discipline. If you learn about discipline and watering plants, you will learn the discipline how to nurture yourself. If you're going, 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 every day, nonstop, and your body is telling you, I'm going to crash, I'm going to crash, I can't take this anymore, and all of a sudden, your energy is projecting out to your kids, to your spouse, then you start to create a toxic environment at home. And so when you have the discipline of knowing how to care for life, you know about yourself. Take care of that energy before it starts to destroy everything else around us. For me, when I go through a lot of stress like that, I isolate myself. I will not be with friends because I feel more comfort with my plants. And also, when you are having intense emotion, undergoing stress, don't be next to people if you absorb their energy. Because then you have your energy that you're uncertain about, and then your girlfriend or boyfriend is having a bad day, you're absorbing their negative energy, but you have no idea why that energy is there. Because you cannot decipher someone else's energy. You can't say, oh, well, you went to school and I went to work. Something must have happened to you in school. You don't know that. Only the person who experienced it can unravel it and get out of that energy. Right? And so when you are going through that tough time, and when you're in the crowd, you realize you're absorbing people's energy, you need to isolate yourself into space and area in which it gives you positive energy. Plants, there's no sad emotion with this plant. So if I'm already sad, it's not going to amplify my sadness. <laughs> Got it? And if I'm irritated or angry, it's not going to amplify that negative energy. It's going to do the opposite. Neutralizes it. Okay? Isolate yourself when you know you are absorbing other people's energy. I myself absorb people's energy. A lot of the people who would be spiritual warriors or work in the area of healing, the reason they're very effective is because they could live through that person's energy and help them guide it out of that. And so if you are that person and you haven't discovered that, but you realize you're absorbing other people's energy, you may be that. So you have to learn how to isolate. This is my energy. This is someone else's energy. Ah, okay, I cannot help this person right now, but I gotta help myself first. And so for the main center, Let's start drawing here. Remember, I said it's the synergy, right? So you have meditation, agriculture, yoga, and education. But it is the synergy that was the power. Today, you're entering this, the gardening, nature. Underneath it, you get meditation. Yoga is the ability to be present with your body. When you're in the garden, you would not lift up any heavy things with your back. You know that, right? Yeah. Thighs. Yeah. Yeah. So body awareness with your surrounding. And then education. Open your mind and allow nature to teach you. Just like the soil that was teaching me, life is difficult. Even the dirt is struggling. Why do you think, Laura, that you have this royal like, treatment in life? That's stress-free. That's easy. No one has that. No one. So we suffer is because we go against nature. I'm going to say that again. We suffer because we go against nature. Death is part of nature. We have to sit with that energy because we have to go through it. Because we love that something that we have attachment with. That's why we suffer. But when we start to accept ah, decaying, <clears throat> universal law, when you get to the next level of education, 
we start to ask, let's imagine a life, there's no death. My strawberry will always be my perfect strawberry. <laughs> what will happen? Science have done that scenario. <laughs> they said, well, if human beings don't die, you start making human beings that are dumber. <laughs> what? So that science showed, indicated that every human being has its own place and purpose and here for a purpose. Their wisdom is gathered by their experience. But if you have the same old thing for three, four hundred years and keep recycling the same thing over and over again, you don't get any smarter. If you have the strawberry that doesn't decay, oh my God, where would we live? It would be everywhere. Right? There's no space for new things, beautiful things. We suffer because we go against nature. So the reverse is true. I want you to ask yourself, what are you struggling with? What are you having a hard time with? What universal law and nature are we going against? Can we get ourselves to the point we would honor the nature and say, teach me. I want to know why. Constantly being curious is the first step to intelligence. And asking why. I'm not going to judge it. I'm going to ask why is this here? Why am I having a hard time dealing with this? Because when you ask why, you start learning about yourself. And your intelligence will tell you, ah, I could vibrate at this frequency, and it feels good. That's your wisdom. Crack that open, get the wisdom. So the synergy is mindfulness. From meditation, you get awareness. Very important in this society. I'm aware there's chemical used to grow the food in the grocery stores. My awareness says I'm going to grow my own food, sustain myself. <laughs> awareness, very important. Awareness is the first step for you to change your course from something that is harming you into something that's nurturing you. If you don't have awareness, how could you change? How could you have a choice? Awareness gives you choice. Then you go into the yoga, present of your body. You learn a lot today. Physical pain, mental suffering, it's a vicious cycle. Body pain. Mental suffering. Vicious cycle. Let's say you don't know what's in your mind right now, but you're suffering. Oh my God, I'm not happy. You don't need to label it. You just need to be present with it. You don't need to judge it. You just need to relax your shoulders, focus on your breathing, and allow the sensation to be present. Is that my time? Okay, good. <laughs> secret. Here's a secret. If you don't know what's going on in here, focus on this. Get yourself into yoga. Get yourself into a hot sauna. Because as a gardener, you know how to play with heat and cold temperature. If your body is in pain, you need the blood circulation. Get into essence salt baths. That should be a routine. You have to learn how to create healthy habits. I'm gonna say that again. You need to start creating healthy habits because when chaos hits, it's your healthy habits gonna kick in. If chaos hits and all you have is bad habit, you're gonna go into that. Automatically. Okay? Focus on your body because when you work out the inflammation in your body, your mind becomes clearer. And then you can say, aha, that negative energy was triggered from my trauma that was triggered during this activity, that activity, this experience. When chaos hits, your mind it's going to go through the rest of the past trauma. 
When you're stressed out, when you're in pain, your mind immediately goes to your past traumas, even though you weren't aware of them. Sometimes you don't remember it. It's just a sensation. For me, I decided when I understood this, I start picking off my past trauma one at a time. Just like a bacteria I was living off of it. Oh my God. I go from one to the next, to the next, to the next. Now, I'm 38, 36, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking for more of the trauma that I experienced in my past so that I can learn from it. You look like 35. Looks like 35, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And for me now, because I dealt with the surface past trauma, I'm going deeper. My deeper trauma can only be triggered by extreme chaos that happens in my life. And when that happens, I isolate myself for about two weeks to three weeks, just focusing on it, be present with it, meditate on it. A meditation doesn't mean you have to close your eyes. You could be walking and observing your breathing and allow that sensation to just experience itself. You have to let the sensation experience itself. The issue in our society is that we are easily distracted. We find things to distract ourselves from the sensation and then it keeps chasing us. Then it comes into your dreams, nightmares. When you start having nightmares, first question you'll ask, what has been triggered? Nightmares. Yourself communicating with you. Something has been triggered. For me, when that happens, shut off, meditate. I go into my garden, and if that trauma is intense and a lot of energy, I'll be doing a lot of digging. And my Fitbit would say, Laura, you got 26,000 steps in one day. And you're like, oh, God, okay, good. I got to another trauma, and now I'm going to get out of it soon. I know that I will get out of it. It is that confidence that will save you, push you through. Okay? Age. Next thing is age. I work with seniors, and a lot of them says, I'm too old for this. I have so much trauma, I'll never resolve it all. I give up. I know I'm going to die in the next, I don't know, 10 years. I don't have enough time to deal with my traumas. Life is precious, no matter how old you are. Every breath is an opportunity to discover yourself and those who have loved you, what that have transformed into. If you don't owe yourself anything to live, you owe the people who loved you to know it, to keep going. You never know when you have that epiphany and the world clears up and you said, aha, life is so beautiful, even with its chaos, even with all this hurt and pain, it is absolutely beautiful. And everything in your surrounding is here to nurture you. Everything, everyone. Did you know that the Earth atmosphere, the oxygen level is 29.95% O2? If it's above this, the planet will burn. You walk into a hospital with an oxygen tank and they say, please don't like a cigarette here. That tank might explode. When you're breathing right now, you're helping the planet to sustain 20.95% oxygen. Above it, it will burn. Below it, we will suffocate. So thanks to you for breathing, <laughs> you're keeping the planet alive. The air that you breathe, we circulated. The air that went into your lungs have now gone to my lungs. The air that my father breathed and exhaled. 
It's been circulating around the planet. We're a part of each other. We're a part of everything. When you find union in duality, you get equanimity. Education gives you equanimity. Harmony, balance, peace in the midst of chaos. Because you already know the equation of life is chaos. That's the mathematical equation, chaos. In the midst of chaos, calm, peace, knowing. Wisdom will guide you. It is wisdom that will reduce the suffering. It's not avoidance. How are you doing with time? I'm so sorry. Five minutes, great. <sighs> Question. I have one question. Okay. <laughs> my, my understanding of the fungus is that fungus is bad. When you were talking about soil and preparing it, and, and is it good or bad? Because I've been studying, uh, you know, fungus for many years because I have fungus in my body and my nails, and mm -hmm. and my understanding is that fungus is really, really bad for our body. Once our body gets it, it's hard to get rid of it. Is it true? Is it not? Fungus is needed because that is the agent of decomposing. It is the agent of death to balance the planet. This is curry leaf, poor thing. Oh my god, it wilted. This is curry leaf, mm -hmm. great for people with diabetes. This is my cheat sheet here. When I eat cake, I chew on this. It immediately takes the sugar in my bloodstream and breaks it down into energy. Okay, immediately. People take insulin shots. My people take curry leaf. This is all. Yes. For fungus, it will kill the fungus. And so what you do, you take this plant, you um, blend it, and you put it in a basket of water, and you soak your feet in there, it'll be gone. Beautiful. Curry leaf. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Where do you find that? So, okay, oh. I grow these. Um, a lot of the vegetables I brought today, some grocery stores or nursery will not carry them. So you go to the website that you have on the pamphlet. On the website, under volunteer, it says request for curry leaf plant. What happened is the survivors at the center, part of their healing is gardening, they would actually propagate plants or grow from seeds and they give it out. So the May Center is all about community, healing the community. Soil seeds are all donated. Plants are all donated. It is a co-op. We eat fruits and vegetables that we grow there, but also learn how to grow in our own homes, whether it's containers or front yards, and then we swap it. This is how you build a healthy community. It is sustainable. Because with one package of tomato seeds, you'll have tons and tons of tomatoes that will produce more seeds, and you could just give it freely. And when it comes to knowledge, there's no such thing as giving knowledge to someone and then it disappears from you. Knowledge does not belong to me. Knowledge of the earth does not belong to you. It belongs to everybody. And when you share it, it amplifies even further. And it creates an environment of health and harmony for you and your grandkids. That is knowledge and wisdom. Yes, question. Do you have any children involved in, in, at the center? Yes, we do intergenerational um, programs, and so the children will garden with the grandparents and the parents as well. And so in a Cambodian culture, we teach our kids at a very young age. And thank God for me, I was taught at a very young age how to honor and respect nature as a guru, as a teacher, and so with the kids, we do the same thing. So they learn how to grow things. They learn how to respect life. They learn discipline. And they have fun. Every so often, we would like release ladybugs and would crawl all over their bodies and they're walking around the plants and tapping onto flowers so that the ladybugs would get on them. So they have fun activities. And last thing, gardening should be done with families and friends and those you love because then you are creating a bond, energy bond between the one you love and the garden. Because when you go away, these will stay. 
And so their memories, when they spent with you, are still here, hold onto by the plants and crops that you have grown together. For the woman in the first video, that was her memory, healing memory was gardening with her grandmother. And then when her grandmother passed away, her life went into chaos. And so when she's in the garden, she would communicate with her grandmother. And years in and years out, she didn't need to do it anymore. She felt the presence all the time. And so that's the secret of sharing a piece of you with your children is to garden with them, to give them that initial resiliency. And that is the secret. It is not the iPad. It's not the Apple phone. <laughs> I think we're running out of time now, is that right? Time's up, okay. Very good.